Agent, welcome to Washington DC and the first part of the SHD field guide. In this video, I'll be going over some of the basics of starting a new agent, as well as an introduction to getting started in Tom Clancy's The Division 2. This video is mainly tailored towards new players, however there may be a thing or two you'll learn as a returning player too. Unlike The Division 1, the Division 2 has a large range of options to customise your character. From your face with individual sliders for each selection, your hair, tattoos and even a selection of clothing. Even if you don't intend on wearing them I'd recommend taking a pair of glasses and a hat. Once you get in game you can just unequip them, but it means you have a few free cosmetics for later on, if you decide to change up your look. Once you've put your character together, make sure you're happy with their appearance. Once you're in game, you'll be unable to change the facial features of your character. However, further down the line, you will be able to change the hair, colour of the hair and tattoos. Once you're happy with your character, it's time to head into DC. After you've played through the introductory missions, you'll be introduced to the base of operations or boot. In Washington, that's what remains of the White House. The base of operations is the central point of all operations by the Division and JTF going on in the Washington area. This is where you'll be able to gain access to most of your activities, as well as crafting, vendors, your stash, and even the clan headquarters later on. Most of the features in the base of operations you will unlock as you progress through the game, but I'll talk a little bit more about how you unlock these features shortly. As a quick side note, if you've unlocked any extras from special editions of the Division 2, or from the shields in the Division 1, these items can be claimed in the Grants section of your mailbox. You can find this in the stash, just as you enter the base of operations. By the way, Agent, head downstairs and check in with the Quartermaster. He can get you set up with some Division tech. You're gonna need the edge. After a short cutscene in the base of operations, you'll meet the Quartermaster. This is where you'll unlock character skills and perks to better equip you with the tools you need to progress through the game. When you're prompted to unlock your first skill, the game gives you the impression that you have to unlock the pulse first, but if you press back, you can actually select any skill you want. I'd highly recommend taking the Reinforcer variant of the Chem Launcher. This is a very reliable healing skill with very quick cooldowns. And by simply double tapping the skill button, you'll drop a heal straight at your own feet. This is ideal while you're in cover taking fire, and allows you to save those armor kits for tricky situations. To unlock additional skills, you'll need to complete missions marked with a small yellow triangle. These will reward you with one skill unlock. Once you've unlocked a skill, you can choose one variant. But additional variants will cost 5 SHD tech each to unlock. SHD tech can be collected from missions marked with the round SHD logo seen here. SHD tech can also be collected in the open world, and will be revealed on the open world map after visiting a safe house in that area. All you have to do is interact with the agent notes, and they'll all appear on your map. Looks like you got your hands full. Good luck. Shave tech cache detected. Next, you will need to unlock a secondary weapon in the perks menu. This one is compulsory, however take a second to inspect the rest of the perks in the menu. Here you'll find many useful perks, such as additional armor kits and inventory capacity. Unlocking perks also requires SHD tech, however the amount you'll need does vary unlike skills. Once you've explored the base of operations, and are equipped with a skill and a secondary weapon slot, it's time to head into DC and discover your first settlement. 
Think of settlements as mini bases of operation, but with only a few of the features, such as the vendor and the stash box. Settlements require completing various missions and tasks in order to upgrade the settlement. Each settlement can be upgraded four times, and with each upgrade you unlock a new member of staff for the White House. Hello, I'm Anaya. I'm going to be helping out at the base of operations with equipment fabrication. It's a pleasure to meet you. This upgrades the White House, giving you access to new sections and services. In settlements, you'll also gain access to projects. Projects are a group of tasks you have to complete for awards. These can range from completing certain missions to donating equipment to the settlement. This makes it important to check if a project requires your old or unwanted equipment before you sell or deconstruct it. Now that you've visited your first settlement and probably completed your first mission, you'll notice a range of activities open up to you. This large blue icon shows you the location of a main story mission. More of these will open up as you play through the game. They have a range of rewards from skill points to large amounts of SHD tech. You're right next to the Grand Washington Hotel. Okay, here we go. That should get their attention. Head to the service entrance on the east side of the building. The smaller blue icons are side missions. These are short, unique missions that reward blueprints for crafting new gear or weapon mods. Thank you. The hyenas have been keeping me here to repair their gear. If you were hoping to find anything useful here, you're out of luck. And these red triangles are strongholds. They're large, epic missions where you attack each faction's main base. Strongholds require you to be quite a high level, but I wouldn't worry about these until you've spent a bit more time in the game. Beating all three strongholds will move you into the world tier system and the end game of the division. This is where the real battle begins. You'll also notice other activities dotted around the map. These are represented by red icons and range from enemy controlled territory to interrupting an enemy faction's propaganda broadcast. As you run through missions and other activities, you'll start picking up more gear and weapons. As you are trying to level a new character, try to remember not to be too precious with new weapons and gear as you collect it. This is mainly because you'll be picking up new and more powerful equipment every time you level up your character, so you'll be replacing it very often. But before you get rid of any of your old weapons and gear, remember to check at the base of operations and settlements that it isn't needed for any projects. If not, I'd highly recommend dismantling it and building up a bit of a stockpile of crafting materials for when you reach the end game. I'll talk more about loot and gear in the next part of the SHD field guide. Now let's be honest, everyone wants to make their agent look good, so I thought I'd run through a few ways you can gather some additional cosmetic items in game. There are two types of cosmetic in the Division 2, non-premium cosmetics and premium cosmetics. Non-premium cosmetics can be gathered in the open world for nothing more than a little time spent searching for them. They have a chance to drop from large luggage cases or large backpacks you'll find in the open world. Premium cosmetics are cosmetic items that can be purchased for real money from the in-game shop. However, you can also earn these for free. Once you hit level 30, every time you level up, you'll receive a field proficiency cache. These drop a weapon, piece of gear, and cipher key fragments. The amount of fragments in a field proficiency cache is dependent on the world tier you're playing in. You can then use these cipher key fragments to craft a cipher key. This will unlock an apparel cache. These will reward you with one premium cosmetic every time you open a cache. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If there is anything you'd like me to talk more about, please let me know in the comments below. Good luck agents, see you next time.